Over the next seven days, I'm gonna be working with my friends Alec and Alex to turn these 12 gray base plates into a massive clone base and battle. We're gonna literally be spending every waking hour outside of our day jobs and sleeping to make this build as good as we possibly can. Let's start with day one. Alex built this micro scale model of what we wanted the base to look like, and this included a classic laser wall, three sections to the main building with different heights, a landing platform for a Jedi Starfighter, observatory deck, and a tunnel for the Republic's vehicles to be deployed into battle. We're also going to be building a full interior to this build, so make sure you stay to the end of the video so you can catch all the details. Now that we've got our plan in place, it's time to start building. We began by laying down a layer of filler brick to give some structure to the bottom of the building. We're going multiple stories tall here so we need a solid foundation. We worked out some ways that we could build modularly so we can take this build apart and transport it easily. One of the main goals we have, other than finishing in seven days, is to bring this base to a convention for people to see it in person. One of the first things we knew we wanted to include on the main floor was a gym for the clones to work out and stay in shape. Clones love being in the gym, so this was a necessary inclusion, of course. Next, we moved on to marking out the main sections for our vehicle base, so we knew where our ATRTs and Republic fighter tanks were going to end up. We marked out a couple of support beams because we want an opening up in the floor to the next section, and then we moved on to the armory near the front entrance to the base. We built a few weapons racks, started getting the flooring tiled off, and then we ran into an issue. So we just finished tiling this area off here, and we were talking and we realized that I don't have enough to cover cover the rest of this area plus all of this section in here and we've got more floors that we're trying to add to the base which we're going to need more tile for so we need to figure something out if i go and try and order these parts from lego they're not going to get here in time so i need a local solution to this issue so i messaged a couple of my friends and thankfully calvin has come through he's got a bunch of two by two tiles in light bluish gray so we're going to head over to his house real quick and pick them up huge shout out to calvin for letting us borrow these parts you can give him a follow on instagram at hartley bricks let's head back to the house so we can keep on building at this point it was starting to get late into the the evening but we were determined to get the interior of the first floor of the base finished so we pushed through and got all the detail work and side builds and tiling done for the vehicle bay at the end of day one i think we're doing pretty well for progress but this is one of the only full days of building that we have available since we started on the weekend and we have the work week approaching quickly so we've got no time to mess around if we want to actually finish everything now that we're done with the interior of the first floor, it's time to start building up. This means that we're adding walls around everything and deciding how we want to detail them. I decided that we should go with a double wall approach to this building. This means that we have to build walls that are two studs thick, which uses a lot more bricks, but it lets us do different designs on the interior and exterior of the building. It also helps add some more stability to the structure, which ended up being incredibly helpful. As I started building the roof to go over the Republic fighter tank parking bay, I realized that we're going to be using a lot of these 16 by 16 Technic brick plates. Otherwise, there's no way we can build things to be strong enough to support weight while crossing a 48 stud distance with no support columns underneath. We're going to be setting a gunship above this parking bay, so it needs to be able to hold a lot of weight. I also started working on lighting at this point because we want to have a fully lit interior on this build, so things are going to get a little bit more complex. For day two, I think we're at a good spot. It'd be nice to be a little bit further along, but lighting was a big time suck for today. I have my system figured out now though, so it shouldn't take nearly as long going forward. Forward. I started day three by making a quick run to my local bricks and minifigs to grab more 16x16 16 16 plates so we can have a consistent color on the underside of all the roofs in the base. The second floor of the vehicle bay is going to act as a transition space. This is where troops can enter the base if they come in on a gunship, they can head to the mess hall and the barracks, which are going to be on the left hand side of this area, and they can go down to the main vehicle bay with the ladder on the right hand side of the room. Once we finished the interior, we got it capped off and started tiling the area where the AV-7 cannon is going to be stationed. We've seen these cannons used on Christophsis, but I've always thought it would make a great defense system for a base, so I'm excited to be able to include one. I was hoping we'd be able to make a little bit more of a dent into things today so we could get started on the mess hall and the barracks. Things are looking good, but I'm feeling a little bit pressed for time. It's day four, and thankfully, Alex is here today to help out with things. He started designing some tables and bunk beds for the clones, along with a kitchen area to really get things rolling for the interior of this space. He made some great progress, aside from a few mishaps, which he quickly recovered from. Oh, what have I done? 
I picked up this blue milk vending machine at Ryan's Mega Store at Brookworld, and I feel like it fits into a cafeteria space perfectly, so I'm glad that we get to use it in this build. After Alex headed out for the day, Alec and I started working on getting things tiled up and getting the walls built up to get us to the final level of the base. Alec tiled off the bark speeder parking zone and entrance to the base while I was working on the landing platform for the Jedi Starfighter. Things are looking good even though we still have a lot of work to do on the base. I'm starting to get kind of stressed because we have this entire section of the mock that's going to need landscaping work for the main battle scene and we haven't even touched it yet. On day 5, to my surprise, an order of tiles came in the mail from LEGO, which is great because we're actually already starting to run low again. Alex was also able to come back and help us out for another day, so things are off to a great start. So Alex, what are you working on here? We're working on the observation deck, the little hangover. Uh, a lot of trouble with these wedges. We ended up settling on the 30 degree angle, and that looks and works perfect for what we need. Alex and I went back and forth on a few design ideas for this observation deck, and I am so glad I had his help to to figure out how we're going to integrate it. Once he headed out for the day, I was fully focused on trying to get the observation deck attached and structurally supported while Alec worked on the interior. After getting everything tiled off, we built up the walls and I started working on the roof. I got the main section attached and then moved on to getting a section built to cover up the observation deck so we could tie everything together. At this point, the base is almost done, but we still have terrain, an entire battle, and the gate to the base to build, so I feel like we're on a time crunch for sure. The first thing to take care of today was getting the roof all finished up so we could move on from the base to the rest of the mock. We tiled everything off and added some detailing with generators and satellites. At this point, we asked our wives to step in and help us build so we could make some progress. We laid down a layer of filler brick and got the laser wall built across the front of the base. Then we moved on to figuring out the layout and landscape of our battle. We marked things out and put down a bunch of filler brick and plate to add some elevation and interest to the terrain so it wasn't just going to be flat and boring. We used so many parts for this build that I almost ran out of filler brick and gray parts, which is pretty crazy given how many parts I've added to my collection over the past couple of years. I think this is looking looking pretty good as far as the layout goes and I like the terrain elevation but there's still a lot of work to be done here and we only have one day left. On the final day of this challenge, I just have to start by giving a huge shout out to my wife and Alex's wife for stepping in and building with us for the entire day so we could finish this mock. We had a hard deadline to get things finished since we were going to head to a concert in the evening and we actually barely ended up finishing on time. For how quickly we built this terrain, I think it looks fantastic. Let's take a look at the final build. If you're around, I'm going to be bringing this build to Brickworld Grand Rapids, so stop by if you want to see it in person. Make sure you give Alec a follow on Instagram at CrossBrickBuilds and give Alex a follow on YouTube at MichiganBricks. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.